Hello friends, I'm Ram Lakshmanan, the architect of Y Crash. In this session, let's talk about Java Virtual Threads. It's a new feature that has come live in JDK 19, okay? So before we get started about, in order to understand more about Java Virtual Threads, you need to understand more about the, what are the internal JVM regions? What are the different memory regions in the JVM? So in the description, I will give a link where you can go and take a look at the details of that. But here I'll just give a quick brief or a recap of that, right? Of what are the different JVM memory regions, okay? So friends, these are the primary memory regions. Uh, these are the memory regions in the Java virtual machine. See, there is going to be a young generation and old generation. So this is young generation, old generation combined together is called as a Java EAP. So in this region, is where say as an application developer, I write a code, say new car, right? I, I instantiate a new object. Almost all of my application objects goes into this heap that is the young and the old generation, right? And the meta space is the region which holds the metadata definitions of your classes, methods, those kind of things, which is required to execute your program. So the metadata definitions, which is required to execute our program goes into this meta space. And then there's this others region. So this is the region where your threads, that is a, a, to execute all our application code, we need threads, right? All those threads are stored in this others region. So besides the threads, there are a few more other things is uh, stored here. Like the JVM does automatic garbage collection. It needs memory. It comes from this region. Your application connects with backend system of records. It, uh, customers makes connection to you. That needs connection objects. So that comes in here, right? And there are a few more other things go to this others region. For now, with this understanding, let's now get into the Java virtual threads. So what it's going to bring, what are the benefits we are going to get? Let's talk about a typical life cycle of a thread, right? This might change for uh, other applications. For most applications, this is a typical life cycle, right? See. Um, here, this black arrow indicates that this is a new customer request that comes to our, our application. So when a new customer request comes to our application, then what happens at the very forefront application server thread pool, every application server, irrespective of whether you're running on a Apache, Tomcat, JBoss, WebLogic, Glassfish, any kind of uh, application server, there is a thread pool at the very forefront. So this thread pool has multiple threads. So whenever a new request comes, that red arrow indicates in this diagram is a thread. So the thread is gonna pick up that new request from new, your, new, your customer request, and then it's gonna go and then make a call to your backend system of records. Today, our, our application talks with API gateways, legacy mainframe systems, database systems. It talks with multiple system of records. So this thread comes, it picks up, that request and makes a backend call. And then once it makes a backend call, it's gonna wait for the response from the backend system. Once the backend system gives you the response, then it takes that response, processes it, and then sends back the response to your customer. And after that, it's gonna go back to the thread pool, right? So this is a typical life cycle of a thread, okay? But now friends, let's zoom into this one, right? Let's zoom in a little bit more to see what actually a thread does. Until a new customer request comes, the thread is going to be waiting in your thread pool. See, the thread is waiting there. And now once the request comes, the thread is going to go, and then it's going to make a call to the backend system of record. It made a call. Until your backend system of record responds, the thread is going to be waiting, right? And now it is waiting. Once it gets back the response, it's going to process it, and then it's going to, it's going to respond back to the customer. And now the thread goes back to the thread pool and then it waits there until the next request comes. If you see a thread is, is, phenomenal, is, 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 is spending significant amount of time and waiting, not doing real work, right? It is waiting in the thread pool for a new request to come and then it is waiting for the backend system of record. And then once it gets a response, it's gonna go back and waiting in the thread pool. So it, in a one thread's life cycle, a thread waits for a significant portion of time. It is actually executing only for a, for a not for a major, for only for a some portion in its life cycle. So majority of the time it waits. See friends, 
so what was happening until this jdk 19 all the way before um the threads how it was working let's let's discuss about it right so that's called as until all the way before jdk 19 it's called as a platform threads they're calling as a platform threads right so whenever a thread is created whenever a new thread is created and underlyingly there is an operating system thread is 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 locked to this thread right so let's say there is this platform thread which is created in this uh, native memory which we saw this as the others region here right it is it's stored here right it's created here when a thread is created it's created in this region and in this region it is assigned an operating system thread is assigned to it right this voting means the operating system thread is assigned to it so this operating system thread is a precious resource right and it's only a finite resource the operating system only has n number of threads right it is assigned to it so even though if a thread in its life cycle as we discussed earlier is waiting for a predominant portion of a time still that operating system thread is locked to it it doesn't matter whether the thread is actually executing a real job or whether it is waiting that that operating system thread which is given to it is going to be locked down to it right until the thread until your platform thread exits your jvm okay so you can you can understand now that means and then also one more thing this operating system thread is a, is a kind of a precious resource and also it occupies a sizable memory right it occupies a sizable memory uh, like it is uh, governed by that uh, jvm argument dash xss the thread stacks it it can be a 1 mb or 2 mb what you can configure right so it, it is not cheap right so it, you can see what's going on so these threads are locked and then they are waiting and and basically you are you are wasting that resource you are wasting memory and the, and this operating system thread is unnecessarily locked down instead it can do some other work right is it making sense what i am saying now so far okay yes. are, okay good so now to address this issue the virtual threads has been introduced right to address this is the virtual threads has been introduced so what is virtual threads right so friends in this jvm memory region this heap region that is eng and vol generation this is where i told we store all our application objects so when a when a new thread say when a new virtual thread is created it is going to be where whenever it is not doing any work right it's going to be stored in this heap region just like our any other any other application objects objects occupy very very small minuscule amount of memory compared to that the threads which which is occupying which underlying uses operating system thread here right it, it because this is any thread occupies substantial memory and whereas in an object here it occupies a very very small minuscule amount of memory right so in in going back to this life cycle whenever a thread is waiting right when it's waiting in the thread pool this virtual thread is stored just as an object in your java heap and now when it's executing only when it's executing an underlying operating system thread is assigned to it and then and then it it works but let's say okay now, now it when it waits in the thread pool this is going to be residing in the java heap now when it's executing a code now an underlying operating system thread is assigned to this uh, virtual thread and now this makes an call to the uh, back end system now when after making a call when it waits once saying the thread it moves from this others region back to this heap because it's waiting right it doesn't need to hold on to the underlying thread we want to it releases it so the thread is the underlying thread is underlying operating system thread is free to do other other execution now it goes back here only so the point what i'm trying to say is only when it has to execute real work it's going to leverage it's going to get locked up and underlying operating system is going to be underlying operating system thread is going to be assigned to that right so actually one uh, thing is so it is not actually okay let's look at this in your java heap all your virtual threads are assigned here 
are residing here right when it has to execute something now this virtual thread is moved and then now it is going to this native memory or which is called as others region and now it is going to be assigned to a platform thread this platform thread underlyingly uses an operating system thread right so so now it is executing now after it is executed it's of code and now let's say it has to wait for the back end system or it has to wait in the thread pool now what's going to happen is this virtual thread will be releasing its control on this platform thread and then this underlying operating system thread and now it will move once again back to this java heap where where it just stored just as in any other application objects so so that this platform thread and this operating system thread is now available to execute is available for other threads to actually do any real work right any any question so this is the very very high level overview or the architecture of this virtual threads right any questions on this you guys are so far on this architecture uh so once uh once the uh, thread receives a response then again virtual thread will be assigned to that uh, uh platform uh, thread right it will be assigned to to any available platform thread not necessarily let's say uh, now the virtual thread use this first platform thread and then in mm -hmm. the underlying operating system thread it made a call okay now when it's waiting for the back end system or it's waiting in the thread pool now it's going to go back to this java heap okay it goes back now let's say the back end gave you back the response right when it now has to really execute something it will be assigned to any other available platform thread not necessarily to this very first platform thread right okay 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 got it okay uh, and then when this virtual thread is waiting right uh, it will be stored in a heap right young or old correct so to will it occupy memory at this yes. time yes it's going to occupy memory but it's going okay. to occupy very very small amount of memory not like okay. how a real operating system thread or a platform thread okay. Occupy, right it, okay say the, the default size is going to be um say it depends on your application what you consider as excesses but typically we are talking about um half a kilobyte uh, 512 kilobyte or 1 megabyte 2 megabyte is going to be the size whereas these objects is going to be bytes so it's it's a such a dramatic difference and mm -hmm. there's a video where we compare uh, where we show you the performance uh, benchmarks of how much these virtual threads occupy and how much these platform threads occupy so that's discussed in an another video we will share that link here in the description any other uh, questions or comments from anyone okay how many so, virtual threads will be created huh? so what is the question how many virtual threads will be created and who is creating that okay see how many virtual threads will be created you can create literally you can create how many virtual threads can be created literally you can create millions of virtual threads right because a virtual thread occupies only few bytes of memory and they are stored in this e region so whatever is your capacity of your xmx right you can do like say even if you have a 2 gb xmx there itself you can create several thousands or some millions of threads right and who is creating it it is who, whichever the part of your application code when you create a thread you can specify whether you want to create it as a virtual thread or you want to create it as a platform thread right so so where, where we do that it is it you can specify okay in fact that that uh, takes us to this next section how we will create a virtual thread right so here is the code to create a virtual thread right it is just very simple there are multiple apis and there is another link which i will give in the description which we talk about what are the different apis to create a virtual thread but this is one of the very simplest api right you can just say thread dot start virtual thread and here you can pass this runnable task so there is a runnable task so this is nothing but a, a lambda code for a runnable task right 
So here you can pass a runnable task. When you invoke this API, start virtual thread, then the virtual thread will be launched. And there is also other APIs, which was discussed in a different uh, video talk, and I will share the link in the description. So friends, I want you to learn two terminologies here, right? One terminology is called a carrier thread. What is a carrier thread, right? So a carrier thread is nothing but a platform thread, which carries whenever this virtual executes something, right? It is moved from this E region to this native memory. And this is where it's going to, some other, it's assigned to a platform thread. So this platform thread is called as a carrier thread. That is because it, it is carries a virtual thread and it does the execution. Right. Now, another terminology that what you want to learn is a stack chunk object. What is a stack chunk object? Whenever a thread, right, let's say a virtual thread here, it was executing, it was in this native memory and it was executing some uh, things there. And when it moves back into this heap, it is stored as an object. That object is called as a stack chunk object. Right. So these are two terminologies that you want to learn. And then there are significant, there are few advantages with this Java virtual threads. And there is a, in, in an another video clip, I'm talking about the details of this advantage of virtual threads. But here from a very, very high level, I'll just give you what it can do, right? For, but for the details, you want to refer to the other video clip. That is this virtual threads. One thing, it will reduce your application's memory consumption, right? As we are discussing, because the, the platform threads occupy sizable memory, but virtual threads occupies memory only when it needs executing. And on all other regions, on all other time periods, it's going to be on the resident in the heap memory, where it doesn't occupy that much memory. So memory consumption is going to go lower, and your application availability is going to go higher. How can this increase my application availability? Watch that video clip, right? And then it can increase your application throughput, and it improves your code quality, and then another beautiful thing is this thread, this virtual thread APIs are 100% compatible with our current platform threads, what we have been using, right? So you don't have to make any code changes. How you create the threads, that is where you create the thread, that is, that's the only thing you need to change. All others remains to be the same, right? And then um, there are some pitfalls, right? What you want to be watching out when you are going to be talking about the virtual threads, right? What are the pitfalls you want to watch out? That is also given in the video clip, in another video clip that is being discussed there. Any questions on this so far? That what you have discussed on this virtual threads? Conceptually, architecturally? Is it making sense? Okay. Your silence yeah. makes me to think yeah. it makes sense. Okay, friends. Thanks for taking time to watch this video clip.